Welcome into the PHNX Coyotes podcast brought to you by the one and only DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top rated sportsbook app. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a five star review. I'm Liam Merrill here with Craig Morgan back in studio. No cane. Cane free. And Steve Peters Not on a Friday. Not but cane free. <laughs> um, and we have been told that it is International Beer Day. And what a I just happy coincidence. I swear I did not know that when I put on my I am beer shirt and Petey and put on his four peaks. Beer, four peak shirt. Like we did not know that. This is also from a Cortland brewery, by the Perfect. way. Perfect. Just in Portland. Perfect. There you go. And, International we, beer and day. we didn't know that when we planned to do a taste test of all of the four peaks <sighs> beers we have in our office. So, you know, just happy coincidences. What can we say? I, I, I just laugh because it's Friday at eleven o'clock in the morning. And we're comfortably dressed, t-shirts, shorts, we're comfortable. We're going to drink beer <laughs> and we're going to bitch and complain. <laughs> and we're on a hockey podcast yeah. where we're really not going to talk about hockey, maybe a little bit. Just but I went to my boss before this and I said, I, this is true. I went to my boss before. I said, okay, I'm going to wear shorts, drink beer and bitch. <laughs> And we're good with this. He goes, well, yeah, that's your job. Literally, did you Literally see? Literally my job. In the Discord, Espo said we do that every day on the Sun <laughs> Show. So it's unreal. It's our turn. It's our God, turn. Life is good. It's a good Friday. Yeah, we've been, we have some rants today. Um, and feel free to tune in and the or chime in in the chat with rants of your own. We'd love to hear them. Um, it just, <laughs> just with this, so this week we went to the new ASU multipurpose arena. And some, for some reason, it's like you mentioned the words, ASU Multipurpose Arena and the Coyotes and any of those combinations and people come out of the woodwork online, specifically people with no Twitter profile pictures or <laughs> pictures that aren't their them. It's pictures of something else. And they just like rent free. This is rent free. No stake in the game. In their heads. No stake in the game. Who cares? HK. They just come out of the woodwork. And listen, like people have been hating on this franchise for for years it is what it is but with the arena stuff especially it just presses a button for people mm -hmm. so it kind of led to the theme of what my rant will be in a minute about the coyotes and why people hate on them and why you should not um and then we're just gonna rant about literally whatever we want not even hockey related and, Petey and i are old and it's easy for us to rant <laughs> and and sean has a rant too and it's gonna be about not what you expect <laughs> at all <laughs> no i'll give you a hundred guesses and you won't come up with yeah it. <laughs> exactly um so i think we should just get started because um <clears throat> buckle up and feel free to chime in with your own points on this because I think the thing I feel most strongly about in the world is people hating on the Coyotes and why that's so stupid. <laughs> if you want to hate on the team for being bad on the ice, by all means, go for it. I have no problem with people hating on the Toronto Maple Leafs for having a Stanley Cup drought, for having a playoff series win drought. That's totally valid. It's on the table. You can make fun of performance on the ice. You can make fun of the Coyotes for finishing 31st or 32nd. I don't care. Go go right ahead. Like I I can't defend them on the ice, but why why do people care so much about people who don't live in Arizona about where the team is going to play about and it and it something that does not affect them it doesn't affect them and then people come online and say well it affects the other teams because of the revenue sharing model. The Coyotes already received the maximum of that model, so actually going to this arena and Craig has reported this, won't have any impact on the revenue sharing for the league. The league wouldn't have signed off on this if it wasn't something they could do. Trust me, they wouldn't have. <clears throat> I'm already like choking over my words. <laughs> I'm getting too, too involved. Um, and also, why do you care how much money billionaires and millionaires are making? That, again, it has no impact on you. <laughs> you can say, oh, it has impact on the league. Okay, the, the billionaires and millionaires who are benefiting. You're just Joe Schmo sitting on your couch in Minnesota. Like, who cares? Well, probably in, in, in Toronto, in Mississauga. In, Toronto in Mississauga. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> Mississauga. In Scarborough. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Saint just Catholics. like, <laughs> yeah, literally just who, ca like, who cares? Nobody cares. And there's teams that have longer playoff series winning droughts than the coyotes there's play there's teams that have also have Including not the won Maple Leafs, but 
Yeah, there's sorry, other no, teams it. that have not won Stanley Cups, including the Vancouver Canucks. Oh, there is an unsuccessful NHL franchise then. Like, there's other teams with bad buildings. You look at the Ottawa Senators and the Calgary Flames. Their building was underwater. <laughs> and what are you going to do? Like, relocate the Calgary Flames or relocate the Ottawa Senators to Canadian franchises? Okay, Canadians, I'd like to hear you say that. And then also, put yourself... Just, like, everybody have a little bit of empathy and just put yourself in somebody else's shoes. How do you think it would feel? Like, think of your sport team. It doesn't have to be hockey. Think about your sport team that you love the most. And for years and years and years, there's legitimate conversation about moving that team and what that would feel like and do to you and your morale. And something that, like, sports isn't just sports. It's people love sports. It's an escape from reality. It's something to rally behind. So if... For some people, cheering for the Coyotes is what makes them happiest. And you're talking about ripping that away and laughing in people's faces as if it's not a big deal. Like for some people, that's a huge deal. It's people's livelihoods. It's our livelihoods. So it's just rude. It's just rude. Some of these cities, and that's Leah's rant. And that was like the main part of it. I can go on for like a whole show. I think we should talk about this one because clearly this one is relevant right now um, because we just toured the arena and a few national sites printed uh, ran photos first look at, at the inside oh, yeah. of asu's arena it's which not was the a, first it, look and where, it was a rendering yeah, which where, you could where find. you've been by the way those have been available for a while so try and keep up with the news here anyway um a lot of those people that rant about the coyote should be moved have experienced losing their franchise quebec winnipeg they've experienced it does that not give you some empathy? Yeah. I, I agree with you 100% on the lack of empathy. And I think this is like it, it, it's social media in general. I think you see yeah. this. People will not empathize with others' plights. And for the Coyotes fan base, it's been brutal. Look, I have said this a million times. I've written it. There is plenty to take aim at when it comes to the Arizona Coyotes. They have botched a lot of things. There have been missteps all along the way. And it's fine to criticize those. What's driving me crazy is like every time the arena comes up now, it's just the same tired narrative rehashed, the same lame humor. It it wasn't funny. When you go on and decide you're going to reply, whoa, with their one fan, buddy, it has been said like a thousand times yeah, before. Be you're not original. original. Your you're insults. not funny. <laughs> you're just lame. Go away. <laughs> Seriously. It's so pathetic. So At lame. least be creative if you're going to come with those sorts of criticisms but i'm not hearing anything new again it's fair game to look at this situation and critique it but the next time to critique it is when they probably put fans in the seats we see how this plays out we see what the revenue situation looks like because it does affect hockey related revenue for players i get all that i get all that but but that doesn't affect you no it definitely doesn't affect the fans uh, unless oh it's taking away from payroll from my team yeah you're struggling in toronto i'm sure i'm sorry you're not able to spend in the cap what the cap could go up more if it weren't for the coyotes maybe marginally but come on let's 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 not overstate the situation the bottom line for fans it doesn't impact you at all i think it people doesn't. just like to bitch about stuff that doesn't impact them it's i just find this on social media all the time it's I, I don't know. I just I, I tune most of it out because I just get tired of it. But when I look at those people, I, I don't think, oh, you have a legitimate argument or I'm sorry you feel that way. I just think you're kind of pathetic. <laughs> like, go get something better to do with your day. For me, it goes. There's a couple things. I, I, yeah, I've been a sports fan my entire life and I was, I'll go always my football team, the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers. If this was the Green Bay Packers and you're a Minnesota Viking fan. I almost give you a little bit of carte blanche. Okay, this is a rivalry that's gone on for decades, and you mm. dislike the town, the people, the team colors. This is different than that. This isn't a, a rivalry amongst your sports. And to Leah's point, if you want to say how bad they suck or we're going to kick your ass or you guys are no good on the ice or you guys stink, again, fair game because that's what sports is. My team's going to kick your team's ass. That's what sports is, right? That's why yeah. you root for your team. Minnesota Vikings played an entire season at the University of Minnesota outside. Did people freak out? Did they say, let's move the Vikings? No, because guess what? The Vikings are one of the best stadiums in all of football. They're going to end up hosting a Super Bowl in that building. Did they already? Or are they going to? Has it, it been announced? Yeah, yeah they're going to. Be because they had to play in an outdoor college stadium for a year. Okay, life moved on. One, it's temporary. Two, and most importantly, and it's been said over and over again, it does not affect you. 
if you were season ticket holders on the upper deck in yes. Glendale, it now affects you and you can be pissed. Yes. Because now that ticket is your priced out of that ticket. You can't go to games anymore. Yep. I will give you carte blanche. It's fair yes. for you to be pissed. Because you can't go see Those your favorite team anymore. Those aren't the people bitching on Twitter, though. The people on Twitter are in markets that not only does not affect them, are not going to games. They don't watch the Coyotes on TV. When the Coyotes are on TV playing the San Jose Sharks, do you think there's people at 11 o'clock at night tuning in to watch them? <laughs> no. So who, <laughs> honestly, who cares? HK. Who cares? The biggest HK, HK of I'm all time. sorry. Do I think that there's people at the Arizona Coyotes management, players, staff, fan base that are going, hey, this isn't ideal. We wish We've it wasn't like it. this. Of course they're saying that. They're saying it publicly. Everybody's <laughs> saying that. This isn't the best. It's the best solution to yeah. get you to the end game. This, When this new building gets approved, and I still believe it will, and it starts to get built in Tempe, when that building is done on the Tempe Town Lake with draft picks that they're picking last year, the year before, and next year, and prospects, this is going to be not only a relevant team on the ice, but they're going to be in a relevant building that Free agents are going to want to come to. I don't know what it is. You want to kick somebody when they're down. Like, do you don't see people in our market disparaging other teams that are at the bottom? Oh, you see the Florida Panthers? They're leading the President's Trophy and they can't fill half their building. No, because guess what? I don't care. It doesn't affect me. HK. Like, who cares? You have the President's Trophy and you have one of the lowest attendance throughout the league on a Monday through Thursday. Don't. I don't care. Does not matter to me if you're playing in Sunrise. Don't care. So why does everybody, oh, they should move. Why? Why should they move? And play it out, Petey. Okay, L let's play that out. Th move the team, because that's what we hear all the time. Yeah, move, right? the move the team. Move the team. Okay. Where? Where? Oh, Houston. <laughs> does Can Houston take a team? Yeah, Tillman Fertitta said he wanted a team. No. Yeah, like, what, five years ago and maybe three years ago casually. Have you actually vetted that? Have you looked into that? Because if you did, if you actually did the reporting instead of citing many year old reports are just casually throwing it out because Houston's whatever the fourth largest city, you would find out that Houston is not an option for relocation, period. Put a period on it. That's it. End of game. The NHL has already looked into it. Tillman Fertitta is lukewarm at best to wanting an NHL team at the price it would take. So what happens in that at that point since he owns the arena? The NHL would have to be a tenant. The NHL is not interested in being a tenant in somebody else's arena because that cuts off revenue streams. So if Houston is to become an NHL market, it's going to be through expansion, which makes more sense anyway, because expansion fees are exorbitant and all the owners benefit. And your precious little team will benefit from that, too, because the cap will go up as a result. So stop with the Houston narrative. Stop with the move the team unless you have played out the scenario of what actually happens after that. There's nowhere to go. That's the point here. That's one of the points anyway. There's nowhere to go that the NHL thinks is a better situation. And secondly, they don't like moving teams. I know you're still hurt from the franchises that relocated from Canada 30 years ago, but take a look at this millennium. How many teams have relocated in this millennium? One, the Atlanta Thrashers. Why? Because there was literally no ownership group that wanted to own them Atlanta. So... If you don't have an owner for the team, clearly you have to move it. Well, the Coyotes have an owner, so they're staying, and the league is going to do whatever it can to keep them in this market because it sends a really bad message to future markets if you are willing to move a team out. What stake are people going to put into a franchise if they believe it might move down the road? And that's all I have yeah, to say and so about this. To, to, to sum this still. up, like, we're not hating on hockey fans. We just want you cheer for your team. Cheer for your team vehemently and passionately and love your team. And when your team plays somebody else, you can hate on that team. You can root against that team. You can call that team names. But this, you have no stake in this game at all. There's absolutely no point to this. Phoenix is a top 10 TV market in the United States of America. It ain't moving. They're not going anywhere. We've got an owner committed to staying in the Valley. They're not moving. They're not going anywhere. Deep breath. And if you don't like the Coyotes, you don't like their jerseys, you don't like their players, fine. fine. Fair you, game. Fine. We're going to sit here. If you've watched our show, we critique this team on the ice often. Whether it's a power play, penalty killing, or individual players, we will critique the team. We are not paid by the team. We don't have any vested interest in the team. We will complain about this team. If they make missteps in the business community, on or off the ice, believe me, we will be right here to talk about it. But in this case... 
There's just nothing there. So please stop. Please stop. It's not, you want to have a cheer for your team. Leave us the hell alone. <laughs> please, please leave us alone. <laughs> I have three more points. Uh, Phoenix is also the far fifth largest city in the United States. So it'd be so stupid to like, why would you not? Petey said they're actually uh, the number 12 TV market in the U.S., but they're ahead of cities like Denver, Seattle, Detroit, Minneapolis, Miami, St. Louis, Pittsburgh. Phoenix is ahead of all of those on TV market. Going back to the revenue point, the year that the Tampa Bay Lightning won the Stanley Cup, they actually did not add revenue. They were operating mm -hmm. in debt. So the Stanley Cup winning Tampa Bay Lightning. <laughs> also, about four of the 32 NHL teams make up for 25% of the league's revenue. So like it, it's not like the Coyotes are the only ones. We talked about Ottawa. The Coyotes haven't even had the lowest average attendance in the league for the past few years not just last year not just the year before but the year before that like they they actually don't have the worst average attendance in the league and people who make jokes oh they're not even going to sell at the 5,000 seat arena okay tell that to the 11,000 plus average you know right. and you can look at all of the attendance records across the years and when a team is bad it it influences attendance and when a bad team plays in Glendale away from where all the ticket holders live it affects it even more. So get that through your head as well. It's just so freaking exhausting and I'm tired of it. I'm just tired of it. Just leave us leave us alone. And also you almost did it. And yeah. also it's so easy. Like what are you a freaking kindergartner like kicking like the little kid the 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 person who can't stand up for themselves. It's like the coyotes are so easy to pick on because they're like yeah. the bottom of the league. Like just get be more creative. Be more original. Yeah. Just yes. stupid. Just stupid. And, and that's cut. and that's our rant. Thank you. Thank you. That's our rant on that. And now we're going to open the floor to non-hockey related rants. And uh, who wants to go first? I want to hear Sean DePaz's call. Yes. I, I almost gave it away there. I want to hear your rant because this is this is this is far outside. This the is box, the I'll most ab abrupt <laughs> topic change that we could possibly do. Exactly. Okay, <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> okay. Um, I, I feel like a few people might know where I'm going with this because I know it's been like a highly anticipated topic. Um, but this is why I absolutely fucking hate koala bears. <laughs> um, so let's start off with um, the fact that their diet sucks. They eat almost exclusively eucalyptus and i'm talking about wild koalas for all of this obviously if you're going to like a zoo or something they're letting you hold a koala bear it's raised in captivity it's a different story but um they almost eat they eat, eat almost exclusively eucalyptus which is poisonous um and it has no nutritional value which is why they're like super lazy um they sleep about like 20 hours a day and they remain stationary mostly stationary for the four hours that they're actually awake so they're just kind of lazy pieces of shit um <laughs> And I know what some of you are thinking. Oh, tee hee, that's just like me. I only, I don't move at all today. Um, you're not funny. Um, I've heard that one before. Um, <laughs> um, and then the babies, right? Um, say, like I said, eucalyptus is poisonous. So when a baby koala was born, they can't just start eating eucalyptus. So what they do is they basically latch on to their moms and they just kind of eat their mom's shit for like five months. <laughs> until they can get their stomachs used to the eucalyptus. Um, the technical term for it is PAP. Um, so He's they literally the... reading off of something. Yeah, I have, I, have, I have a, this is a, a years old PowerPoint that I've had because <laughs> I've given this presentation before. Um, so yeah, they do it because they eat eucalyptus. Um, but here's the kicker, this is the big one for me, is that 90% of these devil spawns have chlamydia. 90% of wild <laughs> koala bears have an STD. Um, and it causes like a lot of, problems with them like they, they they blindness is rampant in the koala community they have like utis and stuff like that koalas suck it affects the males the females baby koalas and yes you can get it from a wild koala um and wait, they, wait, wait how do you that's why your personal life uh, because they why how can you get it because they're stupid aggressive for no reason at all they're they're, they're like hella aggressive they don't like spending time with other koala bears unlike their fellow marsupials kangaroos who uh, travel in packs um they're just yeah they're losers um they don't communicate be between each other very often and when male koalas run into each other it's almost immediately fade on sight like they fight each other 
every time <laughs> and they make the absolute worst noises ever which i actually have an example of oh my um, gosh it is i just this is also I'm, i ripped this off of a video so you're gonna hear like people talking too but this is what koala's screams sound like <laughs> this is the most boring boring fight i've ever seen oh, 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 oh my god 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 this is funny I'm losing it. Um, oh yeah, God. that's like the worst noise I've ever heard an animal make. Um, it's just, it's absolutely fucking miserable. Um, so that's basically oh why I hate koalas, especially when you put them in comparison to other marsupials that are actually kind of cool. Um, koalas fucking suck. Can I have some follow ups? Oh, absolutely. Wow. With the STDs, <laughs> it, are are koalas promiscuous? Um, I honestly don't know that. Um, uh, I, I honestly don't know if they're very promiscuous. Okay. I just know that between like males, they're super aggressive. Um, STDs. <laughs> koalas. I, that yeah. is a I didn't thing. expect to hear yeah. that today. Yep. So I know that Petey was talking about how he likes koalas before the show. He thought they're cute. I hope you don't anymore. They, <laughs> I, I, I will look at them differently the rest of my life. Yeah, as you should. <laughs> Thanks, my, 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 oh my God. Sole purpose in life is to ruin the reputation. Not ruin, because <laughs> ruin implies slander. Um, is to correct the reputation of koala bears um, because people have this oh, cute image of them. Okay, I'm sorry, but this comment, the Watts, at least he's done his research for his hatred. It's yeah, not I, blind. I, I, see, Bring I'm not it like, back around. I'm not like Thank the, the pictureless person from Hamilton, Ontario, <laughs> hating on the co yeah. coyotes. I am, I... you done your research. Hate them for a reason. Yeah. I, don't, I don't just, my opinion is I don't just give out willy-nilly. I have a reason behind it. Um, is this in your Twitter bio, by the way? That I hate koalas? Yeah. No, but for a long like time, be. for a long time, it wasn't my Tinder bio. Back when I was a single man, um, I, I had it in the Tinder bio. It was a great does that, does icebreaker. That work? Does that help? It Did was a great get... icebreaker because <laughs> girls would be like, "Why do you hate koala bears?" And I'd be like, "Let me send you a Google link." Red flag or deal driver. breaker? <laughs> they hate koala bears. Yeah, that's okay. Wow, that was oh, buddy. amazing. Well yes, done. Thank you. Thank well you. Done. Done. Thank you. Oh my gosh! All right. <laughs> Craig, are you? Right, should are I put you, on my glasses yes. and, and read my rant? Yep. <laughs> I don't know how to follow koalas. That's that's. But yours tough is out. good too. Also, just... so I've written mine out. So I'll be looking down at <laughs> my notes. Reading and a that's statement. why I put my glasses on, as Petey tells me I should do. I yeah. never seem to Wear remember. You need glasses. Wear glasses. <laughs> my rant is dedicated to our very own Derek Montia, who just got back from Disneyland. My topic: Fast Pass, or Express Pass, or Disney Genie. Or the premium fast pass on top of the fast pass for some rides, or whatever the hell the marketing folks dream up as a way to take more of your money. Side note, I've always kind of viewed the marketing profession as creative lying. Anyway, I have an advertising major. I take that as um, an insult, and also you're right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, these classist options have been around for years, of course, but on a recent family trip to Universal Studios, the full impact settled in because we actually tried to buy them and were told. They were sold out. Of course, Disney, Universal, and other parks like Six, Six Flags never sell out of general admission tickets per day. They'll let everybody in, and that's the rub. You need Fast Pass to avoid two, sometimes three-hour lines per ride that may limit what you actually accomplish in Sierra Park to a handful of rides or attractions. It's hard to pin down the cost of these parks because they vary greatly depending on what deals you find, hotel stays, other factors. But let's, let's say for the sake of argument, one day for one ticket at Disneyland costs 105 bucks. I think that's the current posted rate. So that's not $420 for a family of four, which also has to pay for parking unless your hotel builds it in, food, and mass-produced souvenirs from their overpriced gift shops that are probably fueled by Elon Musk's child laborers. At wow. Universal, we spent $700 as a family just for our four tickets. Again, we would have added to that cost with FastPass had it been available. And then we ate and spent on the aforementioned clothing and tchotchke. Throw in parking, we spent more than $1,000 for that one day at Universal Studios. My wife and I are by no means wealthy, but we're better off than a lot of families of four. Imagine making that sort of investment for this result. We rode exactly five rides at Universal for an entire day where we were there well past. We were there like basically from open to close. Kung Fu Panda, which is not really a ride and not worth anybody's time unless you're younger than eight years old. 
the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, which was awesome. Jurassic World, which was also awesome. Revenge of the Mummy, which was an absurdly short two minutes and vastly overrated. And then Flight of the Hippogriff, which is one of the lamest roller coasters in the modern world. <laughs> Jeez. The wait time for the mummy was two and a half hours. Wait time for Harry Potter was also two and a half hours. And the wait time at Jurassic World was two hours. That's right. We spent seven hours standing in a line. As I watched Fast Pass folks scream past us, and, and you've mentioned this, Leah, that not even Fast Pass guarantees you short wait times. But as I watched those people sail past us, I watched the eyes of the kids whose families could not obtain or could not afford fast passes. And I had this very thought, which I said out loud to my wife, I'd have to be an abject asshole to buy a fast pass, knowing the impact it has on these kids. More to the point, you'd have to be an abject asshole to allow so many people in the park that those wait times mean a child spends the vast majority of their time at that park standing in a line. Theme and amusement parks are a prime example of grotesque American greed and excess. If I never attend another one, I won't mind it one bit. It's so true. All I gotta say is those are, those comments are Craig Morgan's and Craig Morgan's beliefs, not me. Oh, no, no. I believe it. I mean, I agree. You see where my paycheck comes from? But I'm literally going to Disneyland this weekend. So. Yes, you are. And I did buy the genie thing because I like, why would I not? Deep breath, Greg. You're right. Yeah. It's but, I, but I, it's hard. It's for the kids. But you do yeah. this as you pass the kids. The part's for the kids. <laughs> but you can't blame it me is. for doing that. It's like, it's the systems in place. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a horrible system. Stop letting Stop. so many people they in the to, park. They need to cap. They need to hard yes. cap it. Yeah. They need to hard cap it. It's, yes. I, I bought my ticket. I'm going on Sunday. We bought our ticket two days ago. Like, I shouldn't be able to buy a ticket four days in advance. <laughs> you just shouldn't. You'd also would think that they would want people to get through the rides quicker because if you're not standing in line, you can buy merchandise and food and drink and stuff like that. And Interesting stuff like point. That. I'm also surprised that more amusement parks don't sell drinks and stuff in lines when the line's two hours long. These are good ideas, Sean DePaul. Yeah, yeah I, like, again, like at a advertising major. like at a hockey game where they have the beer, ice cold right? beer, but they just have yeah. Shotgun a beer in line next to some eight year old kid. Why not? <laughs> I was thinking more like I was kid. thinking more like water or like a no. popsicle or something. But come on, you know, go spice off. it up a little. Oh my gosh. Well, PD, I, I'm not as prepared for this because basically, if you've watched this show for the last several months, my whole life is a rant. <laughs> it's true. Virtually everything from the time I get up to the end of the day has some problem. But uh, I'll just touch on one thing that I just drove across the country. I put on over f almost 5,000 miles and just a couple of things out there that bothered me. One, use your cruise control. It's on your car <laughs> for a reason. Please use it. I don't care if you set it at 50 or 80, but please use it. Because if I have to pass too. your car five times in a four hour span between Amarillo and Oklahoma City, <laughs> there's a problem. We're just playing chicken. I got to pass this guy again. And then the problem is when you speed up and slow down next to a semi, then you get boxed in between a semi and the side of the road when you're going up a hill by Albuquerque. That's no good either. So please use your cruise control if you're driving on an interstate freeway. Is that a interstate? Yeah. The interstate. Yeah. If you're on the interstate, use the, use the cruise control. Helps everybody. Semi drivers, love you. You transport our goods. You keep our nation alive. <laughs> but don't pass another semi trailer <laughs> truck on a hill going one mile an hour faster. <laughs> if you want to go 10 miles, blow their doors off. I'm all in. Do it. Otherwise, hang back. Otherwise, hang back, especially going up a hill. Because now you've got 20, 30, 40 cars stacked in behind you, and now you've disrupted the whole entire interstate system of the United States of America because you couldn't wait to do this for then, one minute. About, have you ever had that experience where it looks like the guy's going to pass? And then he and slows then, down. Oh, and then the other one falls past him again. That was my whole entire trip. But again, I get it. If you want to pass somebody, pass them. But please just pass them and get by them. If you want to use a restroom, in a gas station along the interstate highway. A couple of tips. Don't pee on the seat, the floor, the walls, or the sink. Please. <laughs> sink. Wow. Keep it where it belongs. Secondly, the sink is not your personal shower. 
if, and I understand that these are long trips, if you need to take your shirt off and wash your entire body in the sink, please find a restroom that has a lock on the door and do it in private instead of a full room with everybody else. Just please, because so many people have to use these restrooms and make the trip better for everyone else. That's all I have to say today. Sorry, I'm quick and easy. <laughs> TV's rules of the road. Can I just say one other thing is please stay the fuck away from me. Like I hate when, <laughs> I hate when cars are like right on, like next tailgating to you. me. Right, or right next time. to you. Or right next to me, but like, especially when I'm driving home in Phoenix at five and we're all driving like 45 miles an hour because it's bumper to bumper traffic, please stay away from me because you know I'm going to have to slam on my brakes at some point and you're going to rear on me and then I'm going to have to fight you in the middle of the I-10. <laughs> stay away from me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well. <sighs> cleansing. Yeah, That was there cleansing. Was. That was our clearing. There we was. haven't done we need, I think we needed that this summer. I think we did too. We could, I think we, do it. It. we could probably do it again, to be honest. But now we get to turn the whole weekend around because actually my day was going swimmingly before all this. I was having a, I was in a great mood. I'm in, I'm still in a good mood. And I t- I'm going to return to the good mood on our next segment. Yeah. And some why do you, while I'm talking about this, Perhaps. will you get everything ready? So one thing I will never oh, buddy, rant about is the DraftKings Sportsbook app because it's so easy to use. We love the DraftKings Sportsbook app here at PHNX. And if you haven't already downloaded it, you should. It's so easy to deposit and withdraw your money. You can. There's an offer if you're new that you don't want to pass up, which is download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, use the promo code PHNX, make your first deposit, and get a risk-free bet up to $1,000. That's an unbelievable deal. That's promo code PHNX, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. And now we are going to drink beer to now that we've gotten all of our rants out there, we needed to cool off a little, just take the edge off. So luckily our office is stocked. What? Do you need my pick of the week? Yeah. 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 Oh, I we need- didn't want you to forget about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll get to that in a second while PD's setting up the beers. You can start opening them. Sean, <laughs> what's your DraftKings pick of the week? Um, Again, on fire. Hit it again last week. Um. And again, last time I, I gave, uh, I went to a D-Bex game. That gave, gave the game. I gave that as my pick of the week, and it hit. I'm going to D-Bex game again tomorrow night. Um, so I'm taking, they're playing the Colorado Rockies. Uh, the Rockies have Senzatella, who has a damn near 5 ERA. d have Merrill Kelly on the mound, who's the reigning NL pitcher of the month. Um, so I'm taking the Arizona Diamondbacks minus 1.5 at plus 130 as my DraftKings sports pick of the week. I'm also going to the Mercury game, and I wanted to parlay those two, but we don't have odds yet for the Mercury game, so I'm just taking the Diamondbacks minus one and a half All right. That's a good one. Big sports day for Sean tomorrow. That's fun to do a doubleheader downtown, the Mercury and the D-backs. Thank you for reminding me that, Sean. I was just too distracted by the beer being poured in front of me. (laughs) And now we're going to take the edge off. Yeah, International Beer Day. Yeah. Mind the head on those beers, buddy. So we, in our office, because oh, Four nice Peaks board, actually. Four Peaks is our beer sponsor, we have so much Four Peaks in our office. And we've started doing this thing where we like taste testing on Fridays. We did a beer taste test a couple weeks ago. We thought... Burgers. We did the burgers. Oh, is, that's what I meant to say. Did yeah, I, I say beer? Yeah, you said beer. Listen, beer's I'm mind. clearly... I haven't even had a sip yet, I promise. Um... We like doing taste tests and we have four peaks on hand. We love four peaks. And some of these I actually haven't had. I've had some, but not others. So we are going to taste test all of the four peaks. Not This isn't all. This is like a fraction of the the flavor. What happened to the pumpkin beer that Craig was going to stop and get? Well, we had these five at office. And, and when uh, I can... saw it, you know, I, I'm, I'm not sure you're a big pumpkin no, fan. No, so. we'll, no pumpkin we'll revisit, pie, yes. How about we revisit yeah, we have, that in there's October? There's plenty more beers at Four Peaks. There's, yeah. there's a lot of choices. Yeah, maybe at the next Four Peaks Wednesday we can. Yeah, oatmeal stout, pumpkin yep. porter. I, I can think of a lot of things we can try. So. Yes. Oh, my gosh. This is just a fraction of the options that they have. So if you're listening on audio, just know that we will be drinking. So, so sorry if you don't like that sound. But maybe <sighs> head over to the PHN and Exports YouTube channel. Um, yes, and if you're going to drink Four Peaks, please be 21 or older and enjoy responsibly. And if you haven't already, enter our Toast of the Month sweepstakes at gophnx.com so you can win a $50 gift card to the to Four Peaks, to the merchandise locker, and a PHNX annual membership as well. Yeah, and to the law enforcement people watching right now, we'll all be Ubering home so you don't have to worry about us. Or yes. using the PHNX breathalyzer. Yes. Okay, so 
Should we start? We're going to start at that end. And, and, and the reason we're starting at the far end, it's the IPA. <laughs> Which we all know. Is and we Craig's all know favorite. will be Craig's least favorite. So we wanted to get it out of the way and have Craig go first. Okay. <laughs> all right. So this is the Hop Not IPA. This, Sean, you love this one, right? Yeah. I didn't want any beer. It's okay, guys. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, yeah, I do. I do love IPAs. Um, oh, you have... Know, just joking, kind of. Um, thank you. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't want the beer, but I didn't really expect you to give me anything. Um, yeah, I do love the IPAs. I, I had been on a hazy kick for a while. I tried this the last time we were at Four Peaks again for the first time in a while. Uh, this is probably my favorite Four Peaks beer. Hop not? Hop not, yeah. Wow. Uh, I, I, we did the hazy IPA hazy, last time. It's very good. Hazy's popular in this office. To the, so popular, in fact, that we don't have any more because people. Ready? Don't. Cheers. 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 Happy International Beer Day, everyone. Work, work, work. That's good, <laughs> Craig. I, I will say this. It's, uh, it's an IPA. I, I will yeah. say this. And then the reason Four Peaks makes more than one beer is because there's one, not, there's several different kinds of beer drinkers. Now, IPA will not be on the top of my chart either. It's very good though. And cold has got a little crisper. It does have that, that familiar hoppy aftertaste of an IPA. So if you like that, this still it's a really crisp, clean it's IPA. It's not the like I've had IPAs way more bitter mm -hmm. than this. Yeah, like, as someone who almost exclusively orders IPAs when I get beer, this is like a, a spectacular IPA. Yeah. It's not a heavy hoppy yeah. flavor after. I want agreed, agreed with that. Yeah. I want to quickly acknowledge uh John's mm -hmm. rant because I did encourage rants in the chat. Yes. And they said my rant, the Canadians may join, is what are the geniuses at Warner Bros? Discovery thinking their next plan to merge HBO Max and Discovery Plus. This will not end well. Rant over. Yeah, the, the stuff happening at HBO is really weird. You know, it was a bad idea in the first place, Discovery Plus, because who needs that much Discovery Channel content? Thank you. True. Oh, yeah. And did I say happy or hoppy? Ho ho I, of course, said hoppy. You said hoppy. <laughs> hoppy International Beer Day. <laughs> okay, so what's this? The Red Ale Rattle On? The Rattle On Red Ale. This I've, is I've never had this one. You have it? No. And Sean, this is the d back beer. You need to drink this, this tomorrow. So the yeah. Rattle on Red Ale, for me, one you of the unique one. things about Four Peaks is it does represent all of the sports in Arizona. So you can get a Suns Brew, you get the Rattle on Ale. And I tell you what, of the sports-themed beers, this is by far my favorite. But we also know that Red Ale is your favorite beer. I like, so. I like, I like Red Ales, too. So This is a very good beer. All right. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to the Rattle on Red Ale. Oh, that's good. I have not had this beer. Either believe have it or I. Not. Mm. That's good. Okay. That it's beer. On my list. This beer that is really good. This beer tastes like I'm at a baseball game. Like, does yes. that does yes. that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. I could see. I could be. I could see myself drinking a few of these mm -hmm. at a baseball game, like in the heat. It goes down smooth. It's refreshing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, and and I think with the, the the themed can, I think you can feel like you can root for your team. Totally. When you're having the, the rattle. Totally. On this this one. Of the two, this is now number one. Okay. Well, we know I feel it's like Craig's I'm in college again. Yeah, this is this number. is definitely ahead of uh, <laughs> IPA. The IPA doesn't, but it is a good. Oh, and I will acknowledge Charles' rant while we get this one ready. My rant is that Shane called Pop Tarts mid on the Sun Devil Show. Pop, Pop Tarts are one of the more versatile foods they can eat, be eaten toasted or frozen or even right out of the wrapper. Wait, Pre frozen. Each. Um, I've never done it, but I, it is pretty common. Can I just be totally honest? I think I've had maybe one Pop Tart in my oh entire my life. God. Oh my god! Pop Tarts <laughs> are so good. Yeah, elite. The, the they don't cinnamon have those in Canada. They do. I just, okay. The cinnamon brown sugar Pop Tarts are unbelievable, God -tier. buddy. God -tier. That's money. That's Dip a money coffee, choice. The cinnamon okay. brown yes. sugar. It's different. So I'm gonna reveal something weird about <laughs> my family tradition with Pop Tarts. First of all, toasted. Do you do you prefer them toasted? I gotta ask that. Um. I they're good toasted, but it's just it's, I don't think it's worth the work. I like if I'm eating them Same. raw is just, don't toast still them. Good. Okay, so here's how and raw. we eat them. This is like multiple generations, and I've I've introduced this to other people who are like that's weird. Then they tried it and they're like, so just saying uh, from the guy who recommended the Eighth Street chicken strips to you guys, <laughs> toast that brown sugar and cinnamon pop tart, flip it over. And spread a light layer no, of butter on it. Butter. Oh, spread that sounds so butter. good. That spread sounds a light layer of butter. Oh, interesting. Yeah. That, sounds, that sounds delicious, They're Craig. I could see that being really good. <sighs> that's Dan said the butter just melts into a nice, even Toaster layer. Toaster strudels and... are pretty legit, too. Toaster okay. strudels are also amazing. 
Okay, so here? which is this? The golden lager. This is the golden lager. So, I've never had this okay. one either. By the way, can I see that can? Because yeah. that is a sweet can. Yeah, this is can. an amazing can. This is the Just beer that I have a 15 pack of at my house. That's a cool design. And the first time I drank this was on the Salt River. With yeah, my, wow. Which, if you want a location to drink a golden lager, the Salt River fits the vibe. So. Chris said this and Kilt Lifter are the best. So, so the, okay. the, this one, have, the golden lager? Yeah, yeah Chris okay. likes the golden lager. Cheers. All right, golden cheers. lager. <laughs> work, work, work. Yeah, that tastes like I'm on the river. Yeah, it's a good beer, too. I could drink this one at a baseball game, too. Totally. Yeah, yep. totally. Yeah, I'm getting vibe. baseball game vibe. This one's vibe. a little bit lighter, so yeah. this is I'm like getting a baseball game a vibe on this one. Oh. All right. Yep. Yeah, Football. this is like it's 10 in the morning. You got to crush a few before you head in the stadium. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little it's lighter. lighter. Yeah, this is a day drinking beer mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Lighter, crisp. Got that lager, just really light, and That's I, I like good. it. I feel yeah. like I could be hydrated from this beer, which might even be a dangerous feeling. Enjoy, <laughs> can, enjoy the, responsibly. Yeah. You cannot mix in a water. <laughs> yeah, mix in a water. Enjoy Sean, I have a question for you. As we're yes, after, we're on yes, our sir. third beer now. Are you oh, drinking all these? Are you sipping them? I'm finishing. Them. Yeah, crushing them. Look you at these two. Oh, you're not, you're just sipping on them? Yeah, I'm yeah. crushing them. Are you kidding me? This is like a, a one like. One. All right. Oh, yeah, I'm just crushing it. It's, 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 it's I'm not the one driving to California later, so it's fine. It's and fine. also, you're not driving. For Hi, like officer four friendly. Hours. <laughs> yeah, he drives a VW, a gray VW SUV. Okay, sure, no problem. I actually had an officer friendly at my college. His name was Officer Friendly, like his honest thing and everything said friendly. <laughs> oh God. Oh, Debug. We haven't seen Debug in a while. Good morning What's from up, uh, your side of the globe. There's five beers between four people. Like, yeah, we're not kidding. There. I'm just not going to chug them. I, we haven't, I'm just saying. We haven't seen Debug in forever. Yeah. Good Do you to see you, Debug. Debug. Do you have this one? No. What's Debug have to say? Good morning. They got four yeah. peaks on there. Debug's been gone. They're He's on been the other side of the globe. Post game. I, it, okay, now we're going to... The Kilt Lifter. Scottish P, style, lifter, toasted, amber Scottish style, amber. iconic. This is normally my go-to at D-Bax Games because they have this. Um, this is a good beer. At the what? At D-Bax Games, they have the, the tall. You can find this in stores too. Yeah, yeah. This is everywhere. This I is some of these in my fridge. You, yeah, I saw these at Trader Joe's. You're yesterday. gonna find this on tap everywhere too. Yeah. The kilt lifter. Yeah. Yeah. I'm cheers. All right, cheers. To kilt lifting on a Friday. That's good. Not speaking good of beer. kilt lifting, That's did you happen beer. to see the photo of Brad Pitt in what a skirt? Speaking no. of kill lifting, <laughs> you see the photo of Brad Pitt in his skirt. I can't even remember what it was, but it was like a hot day on the set, so he's like, "I was wearing a skirt." It. I wish it was more socially acceptable. I completely agree with you on that, hell. Sean. Like, guys should be able to wear skirts because it seems so comfy. It's all about the circulation. Yeah, that's I, all I'm gonna say. Also, congrats to Debug. I, I, I literally don't know how to answer okay, that. Okay, so well, you don't have to. Debug <laughs> finished their uni studies, so congratulations! Wow. And Way I want to debug. And I want to read Josh's rant. Keep sending your rants in the chat. My rant is that I just watched the movie Bounty Hunter and Gerard Butler would be a way better actor if he didn't eat food so aggressively. He smacks his mouth when he eats and it sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> so like the Oscar does not go to Gerard Butler like because he, he eats weird. Too much noise. Okay, I'll say this before we move on from the Kilt Lifter. People get intimidated because of these darker amber beers. Don't. Yeah, this is not. No, this does don't. not taste this dark. It looks beer. dark, but it's not heavy. This it tastes like a beer I would drink at a pub. Mm -hmm. A great pub beer, but they're, my style. it's much lighter than the yeah. dark color implies. Yeah. I feel like one thing about Four Peaks across all of their beers is that, like, I feel like a lot of times breweries get a little too aggressive. Like, with like they, they, they try yep. to get a little too experimental and they flavor. Like, there's a lot of variety between Four Peaks, but none of it is like, you don't taste anything. You're like, oh my God. Like, it's it's all like, yeah. Yeah. The right level. And this right beer, there. to me, this is a real drinkable and beer. That, because, because IPAs are so trendy right now. Sorry, did I say trendy? Um, I, f I feel like a lot of breweries get do just that with IPAs. Local breweries do that with the I IPAs where you're like, oh, jeez. Like heavy hop. Do you know the history of IPAs and how they came no, to be? please educate us. So I learned this because someone I knew listened to a beer podcast. So back in the day when they would... Uh, travel, I think, oh, I forget if it was India to England or England to India, but, you know, I think it was England to India. Back and, in what day? Like, like how far? Like oh. the 1600s, Ooh, okay. you know, like back So that's then. a long journey. So when you went to high school. <laughs> yeah, like you're on a boat. Right. You're on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be a long boat ride. And they wanted to, they brought beer, but to preserve the beer to last longer, they added hops to it. Yeah. So, uh, 
the more hops you add, the I guess the longer the beer will last. So the more hoppy beers. And in IPA is Indian Pale Ale because they are going right, to right, India. Right, right. Wow. I didn't know that name, Yay. but I didn't know that history. That, yeah. I didn't know that. That That's was a really like bad, not well researched way of saying it, but you get the gist. Um, <laughs> book suggestion: Had to read it in high school. The world through six glasses. It talks about how the world was developed through six different beverages. Um, and one of the chapters is about beer. Um, also, fun fact: cocktails were invented by pirates to prevent getting scurvy, so they just put that made um, fruit in their alcohol. Who invented beer? Um, oh, I, the monks. Uh, Will you look I it up? While we, yeah, I'll look it up while we toast this next one. Okay, okay. So this, this is, this this is the Wow, and, and one thing I'm wearing the Wow T-shirt because it says "Drink Beer, Give Back." Four Peaks does a lot of things for charities, and portions of the sales of Wow they give to their various also, charities. That's an amazing shirt. I also have it, but it's one too. of the best cans in the yeah, which we've in already the game. given to. We gave it to Sean, Sean, but it's one of the best can designs of all beers in my opinion cheers so, well, and people i think also know by now that this is this is one of my very favorite four peaks beers this is top three for me this is the beer we were drinking this is not, because it's got a little to the just last a, game at and this to, River. To, to sean's point it's just a hint of citrus it's refreshing it's not heavy citrus nope heavy fruit it's just right. a hint subtle, subtle. Mm -hmm. um oh this would way, be a good this is a good daytime barbecue oh, beer yeah, that's mm -hmm. so good oh bar uh, yeah burgers? this has got a huge oh, lemon pool side beer. Poolside beer. Poolside beer. Mm, lemon Huge squeeze. poolside beer. Um, oh, yeah. Because I'm normally more of like a um, like a seltzer guy when I'm poolside or like a hard iced tea or something like that. But this is like got that, that citrusy makes it what perfect pool beer. Um, but the first beer in the world was brewed by the ancient Chinese around the year 7000 BCE. Oh, um, but in the West, however, the process now recognized as beer brewing began in Mesopotamia at the Golden Tep settlement now in modern day Iran between 3500 and 3100 BCE. But who were the people that did it? Mesopotamians okay. um, in the West. It was the Chinese that did something similar yeah. first, though. Um, all right. Well, that's our taste test of the today. We could do a whole other one of these with five other beers. That's just how many beers yeah, and Four I, Peaks has. So my order and oatmeal stout will be on that list. My, I, we I'm can do one more in the fall. I am. Yeah, yeah. I'm still going to go with today's my top beer today. Okay. I'm going to go with the Rattle on Red Ale. Which I, I'm a kilt lifter guy. That's my go-to all the time. But today, a little daytime, I'm gonna go with the rattle on red. It's almost noon. Yeah. <laughs> you? What's your favorite of these? I mean, I have to go with Wow. It's just my favorite. But I have to say, Golden Lager is up there for me. Yeah. I I love the Wow. I've, I've said that a million times. But I I also love kilt lifter. I, I I drink a lot of kilt lifter. It's a, it's readily available as we mentioned. But everywhere. I mean, here. I can get Coors Light everywhere. It doesn't mean I'm drinking it. There's lots of Kilt Lifter available, and I love drinking it. It's a good beer. It's a good the beer to I, have in the fridge. The more I drink, wow, the more I like it. It tastes like a seltzer. Like It tastes like a seltzer. Yeah. Well, I think this might have been the seltzer version. Can you look at the can? <laughs> like Chester Cell? No. It's, oh. No, it's just the... Yeah, it's just, it tastes like a... It, first one I finished. It's, the lemony flavor that. gives it like a, a seltzer-ish yeah. taste to it. Uh, yeah. um, so after ending our rants... This was a perfect. This, I feel. I feel like calm now. It's good totally to get drunk. calms on a Friday. This is fantastic. Friday fun day. Two months before the season gets started. This is like, yeah. Perfect. I love it. This was this was really fun. Um, Casey said they hate the oats because they're jealous that all city isn't in their city. It's so true. It's so true. <laughs> well, that's okay. Maybe someday. Yeah, we got we got the ends of the spectrum. We got DNVR with the Avalanche, and then you got CHGO and. PHNX with the Coyotes and yeah. the Blackhawks will be battling it out for, for last. <laughs> the coming we season. should have the All City Cup this year. Oh, I totally think we we I've, I've already talked about this with Jay Zawoski about doing a show and the All City some Cup. sort of and how all the head to head events. records and we'll yeah. keep standings yeah. on how they do head to head. They do yeah. that they do on D-backs. Yeah, there is yeah. an All City standings. They do an All City standings. Yeah. standings. Yeah. But we oh, need okay. to we need to do a show with CHGO about the, the rest of my life. Oh, not very creative. Those like when you look at some of the moves that some of the other teams are making, like Seattle or. Or Anaheim or San Jose at the bottom, or the teams that you think are going to be at the bottom, they've improved themselves a yeah. little bit to where I'm not sure. We're, we're going to dive into this at yeah. some point. Who are the teams that are going to be in that mix? The Blackhawks and the Coyotes are, are definitely yeah. neck and neck. Hashtag it doesn't matter because the league will screw us for 
the Hawks <laughs> to get Bedard anyways. Yeah. And I'm just going to keep reminding the league about uh, some very unsavory stories surrounding the Chicago Blackhawks. Do you really want them to have the number one overall pick? Sean brings that up. And if you haven't already vote in the Twitter poll, we've moved the winners of last week's bracket of the hashtag competition forward. The poll was posted yesterday. It's still open. So head over to at PHNX underscore Coyotes on Twitter and vote in round two of the hashtag season slogan matchup. Before we head out, I just want to tell everyone to check out FOCO if you haven't already. We'll get to it. Okay. I know. Um, we're partnering with a leader in sports merchandise and collectibles. FOCO has got you covered with the best Arizona merchandise. They have officially licensed gear for men, women, and kids, and everything from bobbleheads to swimsuits to Crocs. Head on over to FOCO, that's F-O-C-O dot com, or click the link below in the description for all non-presale items. Use the promo code PHNX for 10% off. All right. Last segment of the day. We always have to do it on a Friday. We can binge. What's everyone watching? I'm watching a... <laughs> I feel like this has happened a, a couple times already to me, but, you know, I, I've, I've obviously <clears throat> uh, pumped the tires of the bear a lot on this show, and I still think it's it's literally the best show of, of the season. And I'm... Uh, I'm weary of like superhero stories and reality TV. I'm just I'm bored. It's 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 played out. I'm done. I, I can't take any more from either one of those genres. The bear is real. It's so good. The acting is amazing. The writing, which I'm a big fan of, is amazing. So watch the bear. But I, I've finished that season already. There's only one season out. It has been renewed. It'll come back. But it it's a fantastic show. The show I'm watching right now and I'm going to watch the final episode today is called Blackbird. And it's a dark ass show yeah. about a serial killer, but it is based on a true story. Based on a true story, and it is hmm. really, really good. The guy who plays the serial killer, like so chilling, dark, though. Chilling, so dark, chilling performance. Yes, yeah. there's there's a this is adult content. It, it is definitely adult content, and it's it's a serial killer, unfortunately, of 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 young girls. And there is a segment in the second to last episode where one yeah, of the victims, away. and obviously this couldn't happen, but one of the victims is narrating sort of the high points of her life. And <laughs> after all that happens, right, and, and calculating the There's hours Friday and days, day again. hours and days that she lived. Jesus. And at the end of it, she's like, people ask me, you know, about my life. And all I'd say is, it was great. And you're just, you're just like, by the end of it, you're just like emotionally exhausted. It's It's creative. It's incredible writing. It's an incredible series. Jesus. All right, PD. Well, see if any of these got liquor. In it. Well, I'm going. I'm going to go completely opposite because Hopefully I got, you can bring it up. I literally that. went in a totally different direction, and I have been binging it since I've been on the road because I got to do quick, short bursts. And I am watching Two and a Half Men on hmm. the Peacock Network. All right, unbelievable TV. You could not. I don't know if you can get away with it today. Some of the things <laughs> that go on on that show. Light, funny, very irreverent, and I missed most of the jokes the first time, so I'm back at Two and a Half Men. <laughs> Roaring Fork 78 said, we're going to go to from serial killers to Love Island. Uh, and by the way, if you watch, if you have any of these services, the first thing that comes up is either F-Boy Island, Love Island, <laughs> uh, Love Island UK. Like it's, it's like their promo piece. And my wife, who doesn't listen to our show often, heard Leah say... <laughs> Love Island. She goes, oh, are we watching Love Island now? So it's coming this weekend. I might sit down and watch Love Island. <laughs> so I will not be binging anything this weekend. I'm leaving after work for California. I'm going to Disneyland, which, you know, Craig just spent five minutes ranting about. <clears throat> Saul is also going to Disneyland, which is funny <laughs> because we got a weekend off from work and we'll probably be seeing Saul at Disney. This weekend. Saul will have that fast pass and be taunting yeah. the kids as he passes them in line. Yep. yep. Yeah, Saul and his <laughs> wife got married at Disney World, by the way. Um, but you all know that I'm still I'm still watching Love Island UK. They have 85 season episodes. eight. Yep. I'm on episode forty one, I think, of sixty. So I'm getting there. How many how many seasons? I'm on season eight. This is the season they're that... just going to keep going out. It's like yeah. supernatural. We're going to have like oh. 45 seasons or something. Okay. It's amazing. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Anyway, we got we to gotta clear the room for the next show. Thank you all so much for watching and thank you for your support. Become a member at gophnx.com. 
If you haven't already, you can sign up for an annual membership and get a shirt from the locker when you do or try your first month, just 50 cents. If you want to do month to month, join our members only discord as well. Go vote in the Twitter poll at phnx underscore coyotes. Follow us, please. We want to hit 4,000 followers soon. Share it with your friends and family who love hockey, who love the coyotes. We got an arena video dropping later today on our social channel, so you want to check that out as well. Subscribe to PHNX Sports on YouTube and follow PHNX Sports across all social platforms for all the great coverage of all of the Arizona sports. Everyone, have a good weekend. Enjoy your TV, enjoy your beer, enjoy time with your family and friends, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.